William and Terry. William had stayed silent for several days. It was most unusual. The engines laughed and would say, Silence is golden! Well, they knew it wouldn't last. And it didn't. A chirpy and inquisitive mogul surveyed the sheds. It was one of Ivet's cousins. He had the same boiler, the same wheels, and the same power classification. The only huge difference was that he had a tender instead of tanks on his side. Ivor was very pleased to have a relative in the sheds, and the newcomer showed the same enthusiasm. The shed master checked his new engine over before welcoming him to his new home. He left him to introduce himself to the other engines. Hello, I'm Robin, he puffed. Why are you called Robin? asked Jimmy. Oh, long story short, a robin built its nest in my cab when I had my wheels taken off to be fitted with new tyres. By the time my wheels were refitted, the robin and its chicks were ready to fly the nest. The fitter gave me the name. Everyone teased me about it at first, but it soon stuck. Well, I think robin is a lovely name, said Fred. The driver said I'd take off as quick as a robin too. Must be an Ivert thing, chuckled robin. Ivert smiled at this thought. Well, I think you and Ivert are going to be very firm friends, puffed Jimmy. William had been watching the engine's conversation and inevitably interrupted. There's something different about you, muttered William, and I don't like it. Um, oh, quivered Robin nervously. Um, <laughs> oh, oh, it must be my livery. Well, I see nothing wrong with it, said Arthur kindly. Dark green is a beautiful colour. It suits you. You and me, my dear boy, we give a splash of colour to these sheds. Well, well, it, it's just I was I was built in Swindon Works, so, so, so as I was going to be, you know, working on the Western region, they painted me in the traditional Great Western green, with British Railways permission, of course. William snorted crossly. An impostor! He exclaimed. I knew there was something fishy about you. Why would anyone give a mogul express passenger livery? Well, only the stupid Western region would. Shut up! Snapped Jimmy. That's enough. You have no right to speak to Robin that way, or speak so rudely of the Western region, added Fred. Ivor was most offended by William's harsh words. It was out of character for Ivor to ever retaliate against anyone, but William had pushed everyone too far. Call yourself a steam engine, you're a disgrace to us all. One day you will have your comeuppance, and you will have no sympathy from any of us. It'll hopefully not some sense into you before it's too late. The sheds fell into silence. William, realising he was outnumbered, said no more. But William, set in his old ways, never learns his lesson. The next day, and Jimmy was sat outside the sheds building up steam. As he waited, he noticed a tender appearing out of one of the sheds. The shedmaster walked across to Jimmy. "'Good morning, Jimmy. How are you feeling?' he asked. "'Oh, I'm fine, sir. Um, who does that tender belong to?' puffed the tank engine. Oh, that belongs to another new engine. You'll meet him in good time. What do you think of Robin? Jimmy smiled. I think he's lovely, sir, but then he trailed away. Um, but William doesn't. One day he's going to say something and it's going to get him into real trouble. The shedmaster thought about the situation. He's as bad as that den. He'll never learn, sighed Jimmy. The shedmaster turned to the stranger's tender. A workman appeared from behind it. It's fixed. He'll be good to go now, he called. The shedmaster turned back to Jimmy with a smile on his face. William will learn his lessons sooner than you think. But for the meantime, Ivert and Robin are in charge of the new engine's morning train until he's in full steam. Keep a good look out for him. You'll hear him before you see him. He chuckled and walked quickly away. Jimmy was rather confused, but said nothing as he made his way to the station. William was ready to depart with his train from the station, but not before he gave his opinion once again to Ivor and Robin. Pah! he huffed. It takes two of you to make up one of me. How pathetic! Why would they build an engine as feeble as you? How do you live with the embarrassment of being weaker than a large tank engine like me? We all just overweight, that's what you are, puffed Jimmy cheekily as he steamed in. Run along now and work off some of that fat. Before William could answer, the guard blew his whistle and he puffed away. Don't listen to him. He'll only get you down. Everyone else knows you're a fine engine, puffed Ivert. He'll get tired of it soon, added Jimmy. He's done it all to us before. 
Well, he sure knows how to make you feel small, grumbled Robin. I'd defend myself if I could get a word in Edgeways. Ivor promised to run off their sorrows as they stormed out of the station. That afternoon, Jimmy and Fred were stood talking. Fred had helped bring a parcel train in due to a failed diesel engine. They were just talking of how William would be put in his place when they could hear a steam engine approaching. They thought nothing of it until it got closer. The sound was extraordinary. They had never heard anything like it. It echoed around everywhere, each blast as loud as the last. Young boys ran to the end of the platform to see who it was. Finally, the sight of a standard five came into view. His shrill whistle was as loud as his chuffs. <laughs> All right there, lads, called the engine. Fred and Jimmy tried to say hello back, but were drowned out by the sounds of the locomotive. Have you heard anything like it? asked Fred, astonished. Jimmy agreed he'd never had, but remembered that this was the stranger in the sheds and told Fred everything. Hmm, maybe the shedmaster thinks this engine is going to put William in his place. He sounds pretty intimidating, but you know William, puffed Fred. Did that engine sound like he was from Liverpool? wondered Jimmy. He did indeed, but you'll have to find out. I wish I could stay, but I've got to go. Fred steamed away with the empty vans. Jimmy all of a sudden felt nervous. His throat went dry, and he struggled to think of something to say. He could hear the engine running round its train and coming up alongside. Jimmy began to panic, but he needn't be, for the engine was smiling. All right there, grinned the engine. I'm Terry. What's yours? I'm... I, I, I'm... I'm Jimmy, he stuttered, but he quickly recovered and greeted him to the station. Terry smiled again, but suddenly asked a quick question. Do you know who William is? I've been hearing bad things about him. Terry had met Ivor and Robin before he brought the afternoon train back. They had advised him to watch out for William and told him all the things he'd said to Robin. Um, <laughs> um, yes I do actually, he'll be arriving soon. Um, may I ask why? He sounds like a bully, and I hate bullies. He needs to be put into his place if I am to be living with him, said Terry sternly. He steamed away. Jimmy was unsure if Terry would put things right after all. It was unlucky for William for moments later as he brought his train in and was ready to leave with his commuter train that something would go wrong. His injectors had failed. There was no time for an engine change, so Terry was coupled in front of William and he would be taken off at the next station. Oh, good grief, yelled William pompously. A standard class. I thought they stopped building riffraff and started building proper engines. Um, <laughs> uh, William, I wouldn't if I were you, squeaked Jimmy nervously. There was an almighty eruption from Terry's safety valve and cylinder drain cocks. Riffraff, you say, cried Terry. I'll show you. And with that, he snorted out of the station, telling William just what he thought of him. William was taken by surprise, and Jimmy was worried he'd never see William again. But that evening he did. He found William tucked up in the shed alone. It was obvious Terry had given him a few home truths. Robin and Ivor were talking happily amongst themselves. Oh, hello, Jimmy. That William apologised to me. He's all right when you get to know him, but he jumped a couple of times when he heard a shrill whistle, chortled Robin. It's that Terry. He's done wonders to these sheds and he's only been here for half a day, teased Ivert. Jimmy, being a kind-hearted engine, did feel sorry for William. I do hope you've learned your lesson, William. Not just for your sake, but for everyone's, whispered Jimmy. William said nothing, but he didn't have to. For Jimmy knew that he had. He buffered up to him under the shed to keep the Stanley tank company. William much appreciated this and closed his eyes. He had a lot to think about.